We moved onto a 45-foot sailboat in Baltimore, Maryland with our parrot and corgi. It took time, patience, and work, but we have managed to transform it into a home. Now, it is time for us to venture out and explore the world as cruisers. Since we ride with a small electric motor, we depend on the winds to take us to new, exciting places. Join us as we travel on board Wisdom, our sailing home. When you have a really long line that you need to coil, there's a couple ways you can do it. One is to make just a single giant coil of rope, which is the first way we're going to show. You can also coil it into several distinct batches of rope, each coiled. The advantage of the single rope is it's all there and it's just one balk to carry. If you do the multiple ones, the advantage they have is you don't have to uncoil the whole thing when you need just a bit of rope from that long line. Now as I'm coiling this rope, I'm making sure that all the loops are coming out to be about the same length. That way the whole coil is quite uniform. I'm also positioning them so that they sit under my thumb. That way I have a good grasp on the rope and it won't come loose while I'm working on it. The last thing is uh, something that you'll notice. As I'm passing the rope into the coil, I'm twisting it just a bit to kind of take out the twist of the lay. That way everything lays smoothly. If I didn't do that, I'd end up with a whole bunch of figure eight loops as the rope would twist in the coil. As we get down to the very end, You'll see that I'll do the last coil until the bitter end lays all the way at the bottom of the coil. Then I'm going to go one loop back. So I'll find the loop and then I'll go one back and I'll pull that one off. So now I technically have a really long loop leading into the bitter end. Then that's the one that I wrap around everything and uh, just a couple wraps, at least two. More is better. And then I'll, at the end, I'll pass that through the top of the coil. So if I need to undo the whole system, all I have to do is unhook that one. And then holding on to it, I'll have the bitter end in my hand. And it just makes it easier to stow. It won't come undone in your lockers. Uh, it's quite secure. So you can lay it down. You can pick it up. You can throw it around. They hold very well and it'll keep its shape and it'll keep everything organized. And with the loop at the end you can tie a lark head knot and pass it over poles or stanchions or other lines and keep them all organized that way as well. When the time comes to use your rope it's really simple you just hold the whole coil pull out the top part and then unwrap a couple wraps until that part comes undone and then keep a hold of it and you will be holding the section near the bitter end. So you can see I just come along and the bitter end will pop out right in there, right into my hand. Instead of making a ridiculously huge coil, the other option is to make multiple small coils. These are each smaller and easier to handle, and then easier to stow because it's not one giant mass of rope, it's instead multiple smaller partitions of rope. So in this first one we're going to do it by coiling long coils, which still offer the same advantage of the other one that it keeps the line straighter and in fewer coils. Now we're getting near the end of the first coil. So we coil it just like before, where when we get to the end we take the previous coil off and then wrap that around. 
but we leave the long tail, which would have been the bitter end, just laying and not included in the coil. So we do a couple wraps around the entire coil, and then we'll pass that part through the top eye. Always making sure not to include the long tail that leads to the second coil. So here we'll pass this part through the eye, and then secure it, and that part is done. Now we grab the tail, and we begin coiling just the same. Ideally you want to make them about the same length of coils, and you want to have the part between them not too long. That way you can tell that the two lines are connected when you're retrieving them out of the locker. One really big advantage of doing multiple coils is if you want to use a part of the rope, you don't have to uncoil the entire massive line. Instead you can just uncoil what you think you'll need and the rest stays coiled. So then when you have to stow the rope, you only have to recoil a smaller portion. If you did one giant coil and you only need 50 feet of it, when you're done using it, you're going to have to recoil the entire length, which can be a couple hundred feet in length. Whereas doing multiple smaller partitions, you can simply use what you need and keep the rest of it all coiled and untouched. This makes it quicker when you're going to put the rope away after you're done working. It's much simpler to just coil, say, 25 or 50 feet rather than a 300 foot line. In the end, you'll end up with two long coils that are each lighter and easier to handle, but they're still large and quite bulky. I find this style not to be my favorite because it's just harder to stow in the boat. I have the same issues with two long lines as I do with one just giant bulky line coiled up. These two lines are coiled, attached, and ready to be stowed. The next way to coil a really long line into smaller partitions is to simply coil them as small coils. Uh, this is actually my favorite because each coil is small and easy to manage, it doesn't take up much space, and it's just simply not as bulky even though you have the same massive line all coiled up. These smaller coils, since they're not as long and not as large, fit into smaller lockers a lot easier, and since they're in multiple partitions, you can stuff one in, get it situated, then stuff the next one in after it, and you can continue packing them in into pretty much a square space, which you can't do if you had one giant bulky line coiled up into one massive coil, or a giant bulky line coiled up into multiple long coils. Now coiling these smaller lines is the same as if you're coiling any of the others. You're going to take the penultimate coil, and you're going to release it, and then you're going to loop that around the entire mass, and at the end, you'll pass that through the eye, and then begin your next coil. If the loop looks a little small when it goes through the eye, it'll probably slip out and then the whole thing comes unraveled in your locker. So all you have to do is go half step back and then come through on the other side. This will make the loop a little longer and then less likely to come unraveled in your locker. Since we're doing small coils, I do include the tail that leads to the next coil in the wraps. That way it gets attached and everything stays a lot closer and tighter. With the long line coils, I keep them separate, that way it's not involved in the coiling around, simply because it makes it easier to maneuver the very large bulky lines that are coiled up. When they're so small like this, you can keep them smaller, and by including it in the coils, it just keeps them tucked together tighter. Once again, we've reached the bitter end, so we're going to take the previous coil off, and then we'll wrap that around the whole thing. You want to make sure that the bitter end ends up at the bottom of the coil, that way it's long enough so it doesn't slip out of the wraps. So we'll just wrap it around a couple times here, and then we'll pass the loop through the eye, and then tighten it down, and this line is coiled. By jiggling the line, you pull the wraps up to the top and it tightens the eye down. Now we have both coils 
finished and ready to be stowed in a very small compartment. Thanks so much for watching and we hope that you will like this video and subscribe to our channel for uh, updates on our adventures. And when you subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell. That way you'll get notifications as soon as the next video is uploaded. Thank you so much.